Number two, once you start thanking God and you start giving there and do this consciously, helping people. All right? Start doing it. That's the way out. I say, well, I'm unemployed. Then start a school where you teach, or didn't you graduate? You graduated. You can teach children how to pass common entrance or pass and do it for free. Give the knowledge. Ah, you have some knowledge. Call them, give it out. And say, this is what, and don't go on and say that I'm unemployed, I just want to, because then they might think you're doing something else. Dress properly. Go there, I don't look at unemployed. I don't see whether I can help you in this area. <laughs> you go there and say, listen, I'm a graduate of this, I have some free um, time on my hands. Can I teach children in this place, in this area, and start giving, consciously. Start putting, you'll see it to come back. The Bible says, cast your bread on men. Well, it will come, listen. It says, cast. It says, they that go forth with tears, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless return with what sheep. Which means they were weeping, but they carried the seed and gave it. There's no, the Bible says they will come back. That's where the opportunity comes. It comes back. The bread you cast on many water is what comes back. That's how the opportunity for the quantum leap comes out. So, once you start living that way, start looking for opportunity that will emerge on the outside, which means begin to scan your life properly. Listen, spend time listening to the voice of your spirit, which means spend time alone. If it's just to sit down in a chair and pray, just listen and think through on things that are going and become somebody that meditates and you listen to the voice within. Learn to spend quiet moments all alone to think and to meditate. So scan through the events of your life and what's going on around you properly. Scan through those things. Think through. Meditate upon those things. Right? Opportunities will emerge there. Scout to find out what registers on your spirit. The rightness and not what the rightness of external circumstances compelled. What pulls upon your consciousness after some time, the more you think about it. And once you start getting that, and that starts coming to you, and the opportunity starts coming, then we get into the practice of what it takes to make quantum leap. To make that leap, you've got to understand that you focus solely on the end of the matter and not on the means or the method. Which means, if this is where you are going, anybody who is going to jump, what he's thinking about is where he will land. God did not call the nation of Israel and say, let me tell you what you will go through. He said, this is where we are going. Are you following what I'm saying here? Focus solely, Bible says, for the joy that Jesus saw ahead of him. Focus on the end of the matter. How will this matter look at the end of the day? How will this thing do to people around me? Focus on that. What kind of joy will it bring to my family? Focus on that. How will it help people around me? Focus on that. Lock your mind on your objective and let that goal, and this is what you've got to understand, determine after some time the method through which you'll get there. Which means you don't have to know how you will get there. Just know where you are going first. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when we get to this, you'll find out, the Bible says, it springs and grows, he knoweth not how. So you don't have to know how you will get there. Can you imagine Joseph trying to figure out how he'll become prime minister? And that's why people that don't know this, when God is taking them with his own way to becoming prime minister, they will react. Because it's not the way they think he should go through. Don't mix things up. Make sure you don't choose your vision by evaluating your resources. And 
your skill level to find out whether you have what it takes to reach your objective. Don't make the commands of your te technique, your methods or resources, the screening device used to select an appropriate goal. The choice of goals for many people depends heavily on what the individual perceives are his or her obvious available means. Preoccupation with how it will happen will lower all of your aspirations. Start by defining your purpose in this, your intent. Don't worry, the method and the means of getting there will follow. What you need to know is where you are going, and you never need to know how you will get there. All right? In fact, when we come to the law of faith in this, you arrive at your destination before you find out how you got there. Are you following me? Which means you call things into existence as though they were before you have any idea how it will happen. So here is where we are going. That's what we're focused on. When you know clearly what your objectives are, where you will land, what happens is, we'll see this, the method, the means, will begin to come. If you start worrying how, you will never start on that journey. In Mark chapter 4, it says, the thing springs up and rises, he knoweth not how. So skip the method. Don't let that block you. Skip the means. Don't let that block you. The answers will come when you start. The quantum leap is achieved through a discovery process that is intuitive, which means you will discover, and that's why we'll get into it, that when you are on this journey, what you pick up by the Spirit in detail is very important and you execute it as he has shown you. Every small detail that he nudges inside your heart is very important. You never have the answers. You will never have the structure and you will never have the certainty up front. I said I started this ministry boring as a friend. This is the hall. Nothing. Well, we can preach. I said, can you give me 1650 to pay for gondola hall for three weeks? That's all. Uh, he gave me the money from his pocket. This is how we started Covenant Christian Center. Thank you very much. The manager of Niger Palace, please, we want to have Sunday service. This is all the money. Sign, thank you. Equipment, nada. If you are thinking of who we sing, <laughs> you won't start. Are you following what I'm saying? But you must know clearly why you want to do what you are doing. The purpose and the intent must be there. You must know in very clear terms what the objectives are. So skip the method and the means. You never have the answers, you never have the structure and the certainty up front. And don't forget the true education of life only begins as you start going after your objective. Anything that you know is theoretical until you hit the ground. It's when you hit the ground that you find out what to do. Then the data that you receive will point you to the real lessons and then you adjust to the reality of the terrain. The quantum leap is what presents itself to you as an opportunity that fear keeps you back from doing. It is the unexpected that comes to you with sudden grace. You can open up yourself to it and let it happen, or you can simply close the door of your heart. In a quantum leap, you draw the maps as you go based on real data and requirements. What you need to do to start is to unleash the unseen forces, which is to unleash the spiritual power that God has placed on the inside of you. That's how you start. And the interesting thing about this is that the major forces that shape in the events of life 
cannot be seen and the truth is they are for free you don't have to pay it's for free you can start today the most powerful things that's why he says why do you labor for that which is not meat and spend money for that which satisfied not he says come and buy without money and without price it's for free what do you do number one write down the vision and make it play what is the vision write it down and please make it play make sure it is simple you didn't say you should resign first all right make sure it is plain all right and make sure it is quantifiable for example let me tell you this somebody asked me a question very good the person said somebody in the office and i will just paraphrase what the person said, the person said is it better i'm writing out the comment is it better to say this is what the person said is it better to say that god has blessed us with 10 million naira i'm just saying this as an example now or to say that god has blessed us in such a way that we are able to send our children to this school to do this and this and when you add up all those things they describe it comes to 10 million naira. i said that other one is the way to write it because you don't know what 10 million naira is but this other one you are saying you know what it is do you get what we're saying here so when you write your vision make it play don't just for example you say well i'll be worth a billion dollars you don't know what that is your heart doesn't know what that is are you following what i'm saying but your heart knows when you say that listen these things and these things and these things have happened in my life if you add what it takes then it can come to one billion but your heart understands that so make it play Covenant Christian Center. Declare out to yourself that these things are present reality in your life and you are living in it today. Make sure you have scriptures through this that you can declare. There is where the power comes out that gives you a solid support that you have access to these things. Have those scriptures and begin so declare these things out of your lips you don't this how you start going after your dream declare to yourself all right that is the present reality you are living in it today in my confessions i make declarations i think i read part of it before and the way i talk about it is only a story because stories are powerful and when you tell a story your heart receives it straight away everything in your heart picks up and I say, well, as I sit down here, observing the events in the last six months of my life that have brought me into this position I am today. So when I talk, it's like those things happened and it took six months for them to happen. Powerful things. So, declare them. Declare to yourself as those prayer reality, as the details pop up, specific things about realizing your goal, don't shy away in fear, say those things. Then the last step here is make sure that when you are declaring these things, you have a small notepad always with you. Write down the ideas that come, write down the insights, practical steps you need to take. Don't joke with the knowledge that comes to you intuitively. It is the difference between failure and success. Those ideas are fire when you act on them. Number six, after you've declared these things, this is important. The Bible says the kingdom of God is as if a man will go cast seed into the ground and do this every day. That practice I said there, do it every day. Now, let me say something. This is what I want to say to you. Somebody said this and I believe what he said is correct. He said, in order for your spirit to absorb that vision, you are making proclamations of scriptures. Let me tell you what he said. 
and begin to work unconsciously on it night and day for 24 hours you have to at certain times flag those things into your consciousness in the sense that your heart becomes solely focused on it no matter what you're doing he said in order to do that is what he said and i agree with him you need to sit down with this vision right and declare it to yourself repeatedly using those scriptures on a certain day for at least 150 times for it to register your heart in a different way that what that man said is correct but go easy because if you say it three times your mind can start wondering do you understand this suddenly you feel like you're drinking coffee That work I said to you is the hardest work in the world. Just to sit down and to be declaring the scriptures, seated up, you don't open the window and allow the thing to saturate into your consciousness. Jesus said, take heed. We'll talk about something with what you hear. The more you meet, it shall be what? Measured back unto you. Quickly. So when you do that, the next row this is important. The kingdom of God is a living man will cast it in the ground and then he will sleep. So you go to sleep, which means practice detachment. Detachment then means you release your expectation is the release of an expectation associated with a specific action, which means when people do that, they start having an expectation that that person will do something. Get detached from the process of how it will happen. Have no specific expectations nor project your desires on anyone, no matter how influential you think they can be to the process of fulfilling those declarations. Detach. To be detached doesn't mean that. All right? It doesn't mean here, okay, when we become detached, it doesn't mean that you are no longer focus you remain completely focused on your goal but you detach from any expectation that you have as to how this thing which means you are declaring it powerfully every day but there is no expectation that this thing must happen like this all right because when you have that then you want to control it says he sleeps he rises the thing will spring up he knoweth not how uh, so you might even meet with somebody that you think is influential can influence this thing and you decide to keep quiet so you don't stand before kings this is one of the things that and start so saying excuse me look they know you are you are not you are, they don't talk like this here first time you meet somebody please uh, you know i have this uh, this my card you know there's this idea i have they know that a stranger is in our midst Make solid confessions in choir as though it is done. But don't tamper with anything in your environment to make anything happen. Are you following what I was saying? It will come to you. If you practice detachment, it, you create the space for it to come back to you. When you start trying to control and influence people, that's what Joseph went to do. He went to go and control. He said, listen, can you help me tell the king? Can you help me tell the king? That I've, listen, in fact, I think he extended the date. Because God must first of all prove to you because you have tampered with the process. Are you following saying? That's why those that try to manipulate, let me get there. God has his own agenda. We become attached to the way we envision something working out and even struggle to make circumstances bend to our desires. God has his own agenda and we are destined to suffer unless we give up our attachment to things working out exactly as we like. If not, you will suffer pain. Because 95% of the time, it will not happen. Are you following what I'm saying? All this, the Holy Spirit spoke to me that you should give me money. When people come and I tell them, and the Holy Spirit is theft. 
Now, being unattached, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, should speak to you to take money out of a fish mouth, the mouth of a fish. <laughs> then we know the Holy Spirit spoke to you. Not to collect. This is just a go and collect from his pocket. All right. Being unattached doesn't mean being disinterested or removed. Rather, it means remaining neutral in our judgment of circumstances, which means when circumstances appear, we don't say things are not working out well. Do you get what I'm saying here? Because you don't know what will carry you there. The circumstances we face are no desire for things to work out as we think they should, because it won't. We must learn to ride the situations we come across and not try to control them. Number seven. After you make declarations and you practice detachment, go after your dream. The major obstacle to overcoming the odds is never challenging them. Movement changes things, which means the ideas he gives you start implementing. Are you following what I'm saying here? Start doing something. Until you test the limit regarding what you can achieve, you don't know what your chances really are. The odds change in your favor when you begin to challenge them. So when you begin to challenge things, the odds will change in your favor. Go after your dream with singleness of purpose. I've said this, it's hard to be great doing things on the side. Real progress is by leaving something, eating something, breathing that thing. Your attitude and the intent of your heart count. Number eight, dream, sorry, before we get to it, dreams begin to crystallize when you go after them. The world behaves differently when you actually take action to go after what you want. The dream moves in your direction when you begin to come towards it. As you reach for it, it has a tendency to start responding. You can think positively all day, wishing, wanting, or desiring. Those things are good but they are passive. Movement shortens the distance between you and your objective. Don't confuse desire with action. The quantum leap requires that you are offensive about your dream. Movement will educate you. When you move, you learn. Movement will educate you. When you move towards something, if I invite someone, they say, no, I learn. There's a reason why they said no. You learn. Pursuit teaches you what works and what doesn't. Doing nothing except passively wishing doesn't generate new data that you can use. Going after your dream generates a steady stream. And this is what, look, you are not failing. You are just gaining data. Number eight, the middle of the road, we've said this will be very uncomfortable. Which means it's not hard, but it will be uncomfortable. You are adjusting to a new way of doing things. The middle of a medical operation, it always looks like murder. Then your support group in the past might criticize you for reaching out of the park. But steady the ship of your life with the declarations that you make in the closet. Number nine, build new allies and relationships. Anybody that doesn't know that doesn't know anything. You build new alliance and you build new relationships. There are people like Jethro who can help you, counsel you, so you know how to encamp at different stages. Which means, as Moses was going out, you get to the stage where you're completely uncomfortable. There are people you can talk to that will just share things with you that will make you know you're on the right path. That will tell you how they went through certain things in their own life. You know, when you are going through things, you think you are the only one. You think that's, that's the one thing you have in your mind. Nobody else in fulfilling their dream. It just happened. They woke up and the dream started. Around time that people were talking, Bill Gates, he said, I, he said, look, we've been going through this kind of challenges since day one. You people are just finding out about it because the press is talking. But which one we've been doing every day? He said, this challenge won't shut us down. This is how we grow and expand. You just know about it because the press is publicizing this.
So build our lives, build the relationship. You know, when I was coming, I just looked at a program on BBC. I was going to talk about it. And he said, look, he will tell you, innovation is only God that creates from nothing. Every other person, you take an existing model and make a 20% adjustment, and you're a genius. That's all. If that you, an idea that's never existed, it's only God. So when you read people, you learn about things, you know the adjustments that you should make. And you do that. Covenant Christian Center. Covenant Christian Center every Sunday has a pickup from the following places. Sabo. Higher Thermocool by Sabo Bus Stop. Onike Wire. Onike Roundabout by Tabade Pharmaceutical. Folago. Oando Filling Station. Ojuelegba. UBA Ojuelegba. Sule. Masha Underbridge. Yaba. Covenant Christian Center. Yaba. The buses will arrive at 7.30 a.m. and leave at 7.55 a.m. They will also drop off at the same locations after the service at 9.45 a.m. God bless you as you come. Join Pastor Koju Oyemade every Sunday. First service at the Yaba Center, number 400 Harbert Macaulay Road, Yaba at 6.30 a.m. Second and fourth services at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos, beside National Theatre at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Third service at the Island Centre, Lagoon Restaurant, Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 8.45 a.m. And also at the midweek service at the Yaba Centre, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you for watching.